These are great photos, MacGyver. They're all the same, just the sizes are different. Yeah, that's because I'm gonna give the little ones to my friends at school, and then I put one in a frame and give it to my granny, and I'll give this to my girlfriend. Before you do that, could you use these photos to explain some mathematics in our lesson today? Photos and maths? Hmm, sounds interesting. Somehow I always manage to bring maths into everything. That's cause there's maths in everything. In transformation geometry, we looked at three types of transformations or movements of objects. A translation just moves an object without turning it or flipping it over in any way. A reflection does just that. It reflects or flips an object over a mirror line or an axis of symmetry. A rotation turns an object around a center of rotation. While these three transformations are quite different, they are also the same as each other in one important way. Can you remember how they are the same? The object itself didn't change. I mean, it stayed the same size and shape all the time. Right. But with today's new transformation, that's just what's going to change. The size. We're going to look at enlargements that change the size of an object. So I guess all my school photos are enlargements then? Right. Let's take a look at them. If this one here is the original size, we would call this one here an enlargement of the original. Or we could say it is the enlarged image of the first photo. See? Your nose, your mouth, your eyes, your whole face has been enlarged. I still look the same, just bigger. Each part of my face seems to be bigger, but just the right amount. Just as well. Imagine what you'd look like if your nose was made bigger, but your mouth hadn't changed by the same amount. What you've just noticed is that the enlargement is in proportion to the original photo. Every part of the photo has been enlarged by the same amount. The second photo is the same as the first one, except it has been made bigger. And because this is maths, we are interested in knowing how much bigger it is. Well, I can fit four of the smaller ones into this one enlarged photo. That means that the area of the small one must be a quarter of the area of the enlargement. But look at the size of the photos. This big one is only twice as long as the small photo. And if we check the width of the small photo, the big photo is twice as wide. What this shows us is that if we double the length and breadth of the small photo, the area of the new photo is four times bigger. Using the mass language, we say that the small photo has been enlarged by a scale factor of 2, since its dimensions have been doubled. However, we find that the area is not doubled. The area is four times bigger. Today we want to see what happens to the lengths and to the area of an object when we enlarge it on the Cartesian plane. We want to be able to describe the enlargement using the coordinates of points. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to enlarge a polygon by a given scale factor, describe an enlargement of a polygon using the coordinates of its vertices, and describe the effect an enlargement has on the area of a polygon. Let's start by looking at a line between two points on the Cartesian plane. I have labeled the points P and Q. What do you think an enlargement of this line would look like? Um, it will just be a longer line, I suppose. Yes, but we need to be quite specific about how much longer the enlargement must be. Here's one possible enlargement of the line. I will label it P', prime, Q'. Prime. Using this prime label reminds us that the new points P' prime and Q' prime are part of an image created from the original line. Can you work out how much longer the enlargement is compared to the original line? I could uh, measure them both. That's a good way. This line is 14 millimeters and this line is 70 millimeters. So it's exactly five times longer. In other words, the image of the line is five times longer than the original line. But why is this enlargement here? Could you put it anywhere on the plane? Can I put it here or here? That's a good question. We have to consider what is called the center of enlargement. This enlargement has been placed here because I use the origin as the center of enlargement. Now I'm confused. What is the center of enlargement? Before I answer that directly, let's see what we can find out about the center of enlargement in this example. 
If I draw a line from the origin to the end point or vertex of the line here and continue, it also joins up with the end point of the enlarged line. Let's see if that happens on the other side. The line will go from the origin through Q, and yes, it joins up to Q prime. That helps us to understand a center of enlargement. It is the point from where the enlargement happens so that the vertices of the object can be joined to the vertices of the enlargement to the origin, all in a straight line. Now, I want you to compare these lines from the origin. If we measure the length from the origin to the object, we get 22 millimeters. If we measure the length from the origin to the end of the image, we get 110 millimeters. I see something. Let me check on my calculator. Yes, this line is exactly five times longer than the line from the image. Let me check the other side. Oh yes, this line is five times longer than this one. That shows us that there is a relationship between the size of an object, the size of enlargement of an object, and how far away the object is from the center of enlargement. The line has been enlarged by a scale factor of five. This means that the image is five times further away from the center of enlargement that the object is. A bigger scale factor will move the enlargement further away from the center of enlargement, while a smaller scale factor will bring it closer to the center of enlargement. Now we also want to know what effect the enlargement has on the coordinates of the line. How do you think the coordinates will be affected? Well, I guess you're going to see that it's five times bigger on the enlargement than it is on the original line. A good guess, but let's check to see if you're right. This point 1, 2 has become 5, 10. And this point 2, 1 has become 10, 5. That's what I thought. The coordinates are also five times bigger. Does that always happen? Well, we can always check with another enlargement. This time I've enlarged a whole shape, not just a line. Here is a quadrilateral on the Cartesian plane. And here is its enlargement. I've labeled the original shape A, B, C, D, and the image A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Gee, this one looks confusing. The shapes overlap each other. Are you sure that's an enlargement? Quite sure. Have a look. A, B, C, D, and A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime are exactly the same shape, but not the same size. In other words, they are similar quadrilaterals and their angles are exactly the same. Oh yes, I see it now. What scale factor do you think was used to enlarge this object? Well, this shape looks a lot bigger than this one. So I think I must measure the size of the shapes. Go ahead. AB is 29 millimeters. And A prime, B prime is 58 millimeters. BC is 23 millimeters. And B prime, C prime is 46 millimeters. Both of those have doubled. My guess is that the scale factor used here is two, but I'll measure the other sides to be sure. I'm right. Each side of A, B, C, D has been doubled to make A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So that means that A, B, C, D has been enlarged by a scale factor of two. All the sides of A, B, C, D have been doubled without changing the angles of the shape. But we haven't checked whether ABCD has been enlarged through the origin to make this new image. Enlarged through the origin? Do you mean we must check the lengths of the lines from the origin to the points like we did just now? Right. Enlarged through the origin is maths jargon. It just means that the origin is the center of enlargement. In other words, we can draw a straight line from the origin through a vertex of the object to the corresponding vertex of its image. This enlargement was twice as big as the object, so our line from the center of enlargement should also be twice as long. Let's check whether the distance from each point of A, B, C, D to the origin has been doubled to get each point on the image. We'll start by looking at just one point on each shape. Let's choose C and C prime and join these points with a line. If the origin is the center of enlargement, then we should find that O, C prime is twice as long as O, C. So does that mean I need to measure OC and OC prime? You can do it that way, but let me show you a way to check this without doing any measuring. Starting at 0, 0, we need to move 5 units to the right and 3 units up. That takes us to C. How could we check that the length of C prime is double this? Couldn't we just move to the right and up again? We can indeed. 
So we move 5 units to the right again and 3 units up. And yes, we do get C prime. So that's an easy way to check that the enlargement of the object was through the origin. See if you can do the same check for B and B prime. Okay, so starting at 0, we move 4 units up and 3 units across to B. Then I do that again for B prime. 4 units up and 3 units across. And that takes me to B prime. If you check point A and A prime, you'll find the length of OA prime is double the length of OA. And the last point D is easier to check. Right. We just move 5 units to the right for D. And another 5 units to the right for D prime. And here's another even easier check to do. Have a look at the coordinates of all the vertices of the two polygons. I see it. 1, 2 at A was double to get 2, 4 at A prime. 3, 4 at B was double to get 6, 8 at B prime. This also works for C and C prime, and for D and D prime. So if the scale factor of enlargement is 2, the X and Y coordinates are just multiplied by 2 to get the coordinates of the vertices of the enlargement. We could test more enlargements, but we'll continue to find the same thing. Let's see if we can work out a rule for us to use. Now, if a shape or polygon is enlarged by a scale factor of k, what will the new coordinates of the new vertices of the polygon be? Hmm. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I'm not sure. sure I understand what you're talking about. Let me put it this way. Look at one point on the polygon. If x, y was a vertex on a polygon, what would an enlargement with a scale factor of k do to the coordinates of the vertex? A scale factor of 2 doubled the coordinates, so I guess the coordinates will be multiplied by k. Well done. So the new coordinates on the enlarged image would be k times x and k times y. This is an important discovery. It means that we can make an enlargement of a polygon without measuring and constructing. Try this one. Draw the image of triangle ABC if it is enlarged through the origin by a scale factor of 3. Here's ABC on the Cartesian plane. A is 1, 1. So I can just multiply by the scale factor of 3. So A prime will be 3, 3. And I can plot it here. B is 1 and 4. So B prime will be 3 and 12. That's here. C is 4 and 1. So C prime will be 12 and 3. That's here. What do I do now? The points you've plotted are three vertices of an enlargement by a scale factor of 3. So now all you have to do is join them to find the whole enlarged shape. Of course. And I get this triangle. Well done. So you've enlarged triangle ABC by a scale factor of 3 through the origin. At the beginning of the lesson, we saw that your photo that had been enlarged by a scale factor of 2 had an area 4 times bigger. How much do you think the area of this triangle has increased? The lengths of the sides are three times longer. I'm not sure. The area must be more than that. Okay. The area of a triangle is half times the base times the perpendicular height. Is it a right angle triangle? Yes, it is. AB runs parallel to the y-axis and AC is parallel to the x-axis. So angle BAC will be 90 degrees. Okay. So I can use AB for the height and AC for the base. That's easy. The area of triangle ABC will be half times 3 times 3. That's 4,5. Good. And that can be measured in square units. Now what about the area of its enlargement? The area of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime will be half times this height, which is 9, and this base, which is also 9. And I get 40,5 square units. Let's see. 40,5 divided by 4,5 is exactly 9. So the area of the enlarged triangle is 9 times bigger than the area of the original triangle. Can you see a relationship between area and the scale factor we use to enlarge the triangle? The scale factor is 3, so that means the area is either 3 squared or 3 times 3. That works. The area of enlargement of a polygon can be described by the square of the scale factor. So. If the scale factor is k, you can find the area of the original shape and then multiply by k squared to get the area of the enlargement through the origin. Okay, here's one last transformation. Here's the original object and here's the image. What enlargement does this represent? But the image is smaller than the object. Aren't the enlargements supposed to be bigger? Well, 
measure the distance between O and A, and then measure the distance between O and A prime. Okay, O A prime is half the distance. What does that mean? Let's see if the coordinates help me on this one. The x of the new shape is half of this x. So is the y. What this means is that we have an enlargement factor of a half. Although this is an enlargement, it actually makes the shape smaller because we have the scale factor of a fraction less than 1. Now let's go over what we learned today. Today we learn how to draw an enlargement of an object if we are given the scale factor. We were also able to work out what the scale factor has been used for an enlargement. And we established that a scale factor of k on the enlargement means that each vertex of the new polygon will have coordinates of kx, ky. We also found a way to work out the area of the enlargement. Now you're ready to do the task for today's lesson. It uses a scale factor of 2.5. Now, don't let the fractions put you off. Work with 1.5 in the same way that we have worked with other scale factors in this lesson. The vertices of a rectangle A, B, C, D are A, 1, 3 B, 1, 6 C, 3, 6 and D, 3, 3 Draw the rectangle and its image if it is enlarged through the origin by a scale factor of 2.5. I hope you enjoyed working with coordinate and transformation geometry. Yes, it was great, eh? but I have to go now, otherwise I'll miss my taxi. Oh.